Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Kasafo. Thank you all for joining us this Shabbat. Hope you all are doing well out there on the Sabbath day today. You're enjoying it. Uh, we give glory and praise to Ahaya, Ashri Ahaya, our Alahayam, and our Lord and Savior, Yahshua Christ. And also, we give thanks for our mother, the Holy Spirit, which is the Ruaka Kwadoshi. Today, we're going to be going into the tribe of Benjamin. As you all know, the 10 tribes were predominantly went to the region of Osirith, which were the islands of the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and the Caribbean Sea. They are known as the aboriginals, indigenous, or natives of those lands and islands. Today, the 10 tribes are scattered across the world presently, so they are not regulated to being in one of those specific areas right now. And the 10 tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, and Manasseh, all of which we had the opportunity by Ahia's grace to go over those tribes to help them to identify who they are and also know the admonitions of their fathers so that they may overcome the struggles that they face through faith in Yahche our Lord here in these times. Now we're here on the Southern Kingdom looking at the people today who are of the Negroes, the Bantus of Africa, or the people that came off the cargo slave ships. And one personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our request known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know our tribes according to the scriptures like Numbers chapter 1 verse 2. If one's ancestry stems back to the slaves, the Negroes, the Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon or the ten tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to any Native American indigenous people of the Americas and the Caribbeans, or the aboriginals and indigenous tribes of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, then more than likely you are from the 10 tribes of Israel. Uh, this series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented their children would face. We know the signs and the curses that help identify the children of Israel around the world today. Yet through the spiritual indicators in the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It is by the Spirit, Ahai has given the grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from, since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searcheth all things, and we cannot know anything except the Spirit reveal them. You have references in scriptures like John 16, verse 13, and John 14 and 26, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, for understanding that is the Spirit that is bringing the understanding and bringing these things to pass. Now getting into the tribe of Benjamin. Jacob spake of what will befall Benjamin in the last days. When we look at Genesis chapter 49, verse 27, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. This prophecy that was foretold to Benjamin. When we get to the end of the lesson, you understand, because Benjamin himself will speak of it. Moses spake also of blessings that will be upon Benjamin in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 12. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of Ahaya shall dwell in safety by him, and Ahaya shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. This is telling of in the kingdom of Christ where Benjamin is going to dwell because Ahaya's dwelling is in Jerusalem and that is in the land of Benjamin and Benjamin also as we're going to read in his testament he's going to speak of this dwelling that he and his children will have in the kingdom jumping right into it the testament of Benjamin the copy of the words of Benjamin which he commanded his sons to observe after he had lived 125 years and he kissed them and said, As Isaac was born to Abraham, in his old age, so also was I to Jacob. And since Rachel, my mother, died in giving me birth, I had no milk. Therefore I was suckled by Bilhah, her handmaid, 
for Rachel remained barren for nine years after she had born Joseph. And she prayed Ahiah with fasting twelve days. And she conceived and bare me. For my father loved Rachel dearly and prayed that he might see two sons born from her. Therefore was I called Benjamin, that is, a son of days. Chapter 2 of Testament of Benjamin And when I went into Egypt, to Joseph, my brother, recognized me, and he said to me, What did they tell my father when they sold me? And I said unto him, They dabbled thy coat with blood and sent it, and said, Know whether this be thy son's coat. And Joseph said unto me, Even so, brother, the Canaanite merchants stole me by force, and it came to pass that as they went on their way they concealed my garment, as though a wild beast had met me and slain me. And so his associates sold me to the Ishmaelites. And they did not lie in this saying, for he wished to conceal from me the deeds of my brethren. And he called to him his brethren and said, Do not tell my father what ye have done unto me, but tell him as I have told Benjamin, and let the thoughts among you be such, and let not these things come to the heart of my father. Do ye also therefore, my children, love Ahayah Alahayim of heaven and earth, and keep his commandments, and follow the example of the good and holy man Joseph, and let your mind be unto good, even as you know me. For he that hath his mind right seeth all things rightly. Benjamin struggled with having ill thoughts from listening to evil spirits in the mind, and not having the right mindset causing him to see things wrongly. They also struggle with keeping the commandments for these reasons. The cure from their father is to love the Lord of heaven and earth, specifically Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, and keep his commandments not leaning on their own understanding, while being followers of Joseph's example of hiding the faults of brethren out of love with long suffering. Benjamin struggle with exposing each other's faults with impatience, complaining about their brethren and not being long-suffering to those they feel have done them wrong, unlike Joseph, who didn't complain to Benjamin or try to tell him how he was wrong out of frustration at what his brethren did, but sought an occasion to cover their fault out of love and desire of peace. For their edification be as Joseph, he acts as follows. In Testament of Joseph, chapter 17, verse 2 to 3, it says, Do ye also therefore love one another? And with long suffering hide ye one another's faults. For Allah delighteth in the unity of brethren, and in the purpose of a heart that takes pleasure in love. This is how Benjamites need to be. But through the hatred of brethren, they struggle with envy and jealousy, having evil thoughts toward their brethren, as was the case of Saul, who hated David, envying him because he was more prosperous. Michal also, David's wife ended up hating him for his glory among the people as well. And so, their marriages can be affected by these struggles. By following Joseph, they can overcome this. Testament of Simeon, chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. Now, Joseph was a good man, and had the spirit of Allah within him. Being compassionate and pitiful, he bore no malice against me, but loved me even as the rest of his brethren. This will help Benjamites because they struggle with having compassion and pity towards those who they feel have wronged them, and they'll bear ill will against the person, though they may forgive the person in word, but in their minds they haven't left off from the evil thoughts, like as Saul did to David, repenting when he got caught, but not leaving off from his ill will towards him. Now Joseph had the Holy Spirit enabling him to be compassionate and pitiful, and Benjamites need to keep the commandments of Ahaya, as Benjamin said, that they may receive her, according to Sirach, chapter 1, verse 26, to be the same. So one can understand Benjamin's commands were an aid to his children's struggles. Continuing in Simeon, Beware, therefore, my children, of all jealousy and envy, and walk in singleness of soul and with a good heart, keeping in mind Joseph your father's brother, 
that Allah may give you also grace and glory and blessing upon your heads, even as ye saw in Joseph's case. We see Joseph was on guard against jealousy and envy, so Benjamites need to do the same with singleness, which can be learned from Issachar's testament, and a good heart remembering what Joseph went through and how he responded. Continuing in Simeon, all his days he reproached us not concerning this thing, but loved us as his own soul. Now that's the right way to treat someone who may wrong you. Yet, Benjamites would reproach the person they feel wronged them, complaining about it to others, not being able to let it go. Saul, for example, railed on Jonathan when he tried to speak good of David or convince him not to harm him. Also, Benjamin's issue is in their mind, so they may not say it directly to the person, but it is in their thoughts how they really feel, and the inner thoughts lead them astray. Thankfully, Joseph sets the example. Continuing in Simeon, And beyond his own sons glorified us, and gave us riches, and cattle, and fruits. Do ye also, my children, love each one his brother with a good heart? and the spirit of envy will withdraw from you. The issue of hatred of brothers without pity or compassion after wrongdoings and envy is among Benjamites and their family members. You'll find their family relationships aren't the best for these reasons, especially among siblings. Benjamites also struggle with hypocrisy. They talk well, teaching what folks ought to do but their actions do not add up to what they teach. Thankfully, Joseph set the example of how to be an example of a believer. In the Testament of Levi, chapter 13, verse 9, Whosoever teaches noble things and does them shall be enthroned with kings, as was also Joseph, my brother. Testament of Joseph, chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. If ye also, therefore, walk in the commandments of the Lord, my children, he will exalt you there and will bless you with good things forever and ever. And if anyone seek to do evil unto you, do well unto him and pray for him, and ye shall be redeemed of the Lord from all evil. This is essential for Benjamites to get away from rendering evil for evil, because if they think you're trying to wrong them, they will be bad-minded towards you being upset about it in retaliation. But now they have a better way through Joseph's example to do good anyway and pray for the person in long-suffering for deliverance. These good works of Joseph are from his love for Ahaya, walk with the fear of Allahayim before his eyes to be mindful to do what's right in Allahayim's sight, not his own. Testament of Joseph Chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Do ye also, my children, have the fear of Allah in all your works before your eyes, and honor your brethren? For every one who doeth the law of the Lord shall be loved by him. That's true religion, fear in him, brotherly love, honoring brethren, and doing the law to receive his love rather than just speaking good things. Sirach chapter 19 verse 20 The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, and the knowledge of his omnipotency. When Benjamites perform the law, they show they have the knowledge of the power of his omnipotence, and it will deliver them from being just talkers of his power, but doers of the things that please him, being endowed with his power. And his power is understood in Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Paul is an example of a Benjamite that knew of the power of Ahaya and was endowed with his power through faith to be patient and long suffering with all the churches. Let's continue Benjamin's admonition for you, his children. Testament of Benjamin, chapter 3, verse 2. And let your mind be unto good, 
even as you know me. For he that hath his mind right seeth all things rightly. The bad mindedness and not seeing things rightly comes from being led by evil spirits. They struggle with spiritual strongholds. Saul is an example of this when he was overtaken by an evil spirit through hatred and envy of David and couldn't think anything good towards him and started doing him wrong and ill will. Even McCall was taken by an evil spirit in her mind to reproach David when he was just praising the Lord. Keeping your mind unto good as Benjamin will help you all see things rightly again. Asher spake of how you should operate when your mind is unto good as your father Benjamin exhorts you to do. In the uh, Testament of Asher chapter 1 verse 6 to 7. Therefore, if the soul take pleasure in the good inclination, all its actions are in righteousness. In the fear of Allah, ensuring all your actions are in righteousness of so the fruits of the Spirit will keep your mind in the right place when discerning your actions. And if it sin, it straightway repenteth. For having its thoughts set upon righteousness and casting away wickedness, it straightway overcometh the evil and uprooteth the sin. You will be quick to repent when you fall because you sincerely want to do right with a good mind being set on the goal of becoming as Christ like Joseph. You won't entertain any excuse to justify why you did what you did or feel how you feel, but would cast it from you, confessing and forsaking the error when you do that continually. Eventually, you will overcome the evil because your mind is inclined into the service of Allah Hayyam. Benjamites need this good mind because they struggle with justifying or making excuses for their errors just like Saul did when Samuel reproved them about the ill-advised sacrifice and the Amalekites. Benjamites struggle with seeking glory of men and being concerned about what people think to seem good in their sight as Saul, for fear of public opinion, saved Agag and the sheep lest the people be upset with them. They ought not to be this way because the testament of Benjamin chapter 6 verse 4 says, The good inclination receiveth not the glory nor dishonor from men. The good-minded man doesn't seek glory of men nor respect persons to be concerned with pleasing men. But in the bad mind, Benjamites respect what people think and seek glory from men acting according to what would get them the glory of others. They'll tend to lie or resort to being deceptive when explaining themselves to make an excuse or justify what they did as Saul claimed he forced himself to think the sacrifice was right to do when Samuel was supposed to do it. Then, more times than not, acting nonchalantly like there was nothing wrong done, like Saul when he greeted Samuel speaking as if he had kept the command though he knew in his heart he did his own will for fear of losing the respect of the people wherein he desired to be held in honor, which he finally admitted after Samuel didn't buy or accept his excuses. Benjamites struggle with deceit, so they'll say whatever sounds good to save face when they know they did something contrary to the command, as Saul tried to keep his story going when Samuel questioned if he truly did what the Lord commanded concerning the Amalekites in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Then, if they get caught up in their guile, they will acknowledge they sinned or were wrong, but they won't leave off from their desire, saying what sounds good in the moment, as Saul acknowledged he was wrong and sought Samuel to come worship with him, but he really just didn't want the people to see Samuel leave him, which would make him look bad to the people because he was more concerned with what they would think rather and was right in the sight of the Lord, caught up on being honored in the sight of men rather than being remorseful about sinning against the Lord. Benjamin struggle with being carnal minded and don't put much weight into how they offend the Lord, thinking he is ever with them and lightly esteeming when they sin, apologizing if caught, but not leaving off from their bad mind, being more concerned about having the honor of men like themselves, than being in good standing with Allah Hayyam, even as Saul fell victim to. Now, I mentioned Benjamin struggle with the spiritual strongholds, 
and being overtaken by evil spirits, like Saul. This comes from the bad mind which inclines unto the evil inclination and causes them to be ruled by Belial. This understanding comes from Testament of Asher chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. But if it incline to the evil inclination, all its actions are in wickedness, and it driveth away the good and cleaveth to the evil, and is ruled by Belial. Even though it work what is good, he perverted it to evil. For whenever it beginneth to do good, he forceth the issue of the action into an evil for him. So, Benjamin struggle with generally doing good without some ulterior motive for themselves under the bad mindset. Jonathan is an example in that he was good to David and loved him, but he wasn't single-minded being genuine in that he was doing it to preserve himself in case his father's house fell. As Jonathan, Benjamites have self-interest while trying to please men and to be held in honor. So they can get caught in the middle trying to stay in everyone's good graces just as Jonathan played the middle ground to preserve his position as second in command with his father and with David so that he would not lose the honor he held as second in the kingdom if either of them would prevail. Benjamites will do and say what they feel they have to although they may sincerely love and care for someone as Jonathan loved David. The bad inclination leads them to protect their own interests, using guile and being deceitful to ensure they get what they want, as Jonathan did, and Saul, who would even disguise himself to go inquire of the woman with a familiar spirit to get what he wanted. Continuing reading, Testament of Asher. For whenever it beginneth to do good, he forceth the issue of the action into an evil for him seeing that the treasure of the inclination is filled with an evil spirit. So, they'll start off doing good, but their desires will lead them to corrupt their intent, and an evil spirit will take hold of them, as was the case with Jonathan. The bad mind causes Benjamites to be inclined unto evil spirits, hence they struggle with the spiritual strongholds, and aren't really persuaded from what they want or think is right as Saul couldn't be persuaded by anyone's words or his failed attempts at his endeavor because that evil spirit that has taken hold of them will convince them to stay in that wrong viewpoint and bad mind when they seek to come out of it. It can be whatever spirit they incline unto that will take their mind, holding them there in its lust, and it's hard for them to come out of it even as Saul couldn't leave off from his hatred for David, even when he knew he was wrong because he still wanted what he wanted. Benjamites would even acknowledge how they feel isn't right, like Saul did when Samuel reproved him, but they'll still feel how they feel and have their reasons to do so, not changing their mind, being justified in what they think. They can also make excuses and use God to convince others to do their bidding like they are trying to help others as Saul who tried to justify killing David for Jonathan's sake to convince him to do the work for him in 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 31. Let's get into that scripture to see how it goes. 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 1 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. Chapter 19 verse 4 and Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee ward very good. Chapter 19, verse 6. And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. Sadly, he truly didn't change his mind, though he swore and all, because at the next opportunity, he went right back to his initial intent, trying to justify it. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 31 For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore, now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. So, 
Benjamites, they struggle with changing their mindset as that spirit's stronghold leads them unto their death. As Saul didn't leave off his malice for 30-something years until he died. Jonathan also shows how one can begin to do good, but will force the issue into evil for oneself. He loved David, yet over time he was double-minded of self-preservation, trying to please David with good words, but not willing to fully choose Allah seeing his father was drifting away from what was right. He was insincere looking out for himself in case David prevailed, while also still loving his father, willing to die with him in his evil for the glory of being second in the kingdom. Some of the characteristics of the bad-minded person can be as follows. Testament of Asher, chapter 2 through chapter 4. Chapter 2, verse 1. A person then may with words help the good for the sake of evil, yet the issue of the action leadeth to mischief. Now, I saw who spoke good to David of giving him his daughter, but the intent was for his own device to get him killed. Benjamites would be helpful in word for their own interests and for the glory of being honored as good from men. Continuing reading. There is a man who showeth no compassion upon him who serveth his turn in evil, and this thing hath two aspects, but the whole is evil. You have an example. Mephith Bosheth, the son of Jonathan, didn't have compassion on David when he sinned and was cast out for his evil, but remained in Jerusalem in hopes of regaining the kingdom for himself in Second Samuel chapter 16 verse 3, showing his true desire. Second Samuel chapter 16 verse 3 And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. There we see what his true desire was. Yet, when David was delivered, he came in guile, lying about what happened, trying to save face so as not to lose favor with David for fear of his life. There was also Shimei, the Benjamite, who railed on and reproached David in Second Samuel 16, when he was cast out for his sin, having no compassion on him in that evil inclination. And Asher explained it well. He said, and this thing hath two aspects, but the whole is evil. Benjamite struggled with not having mercy on sinners, so Mephibosheth and Shimei looked at it as David deserved his evil case for his sin, which is true because Allah is just. Yet their whole mindset was evil because they had no compassion for their fellow man, who is susceptible to falling just like themselves in bad mindedness. Benjamin wants you to be of a good mind instead as he says in testament of benjamin chapter 4 verse 3 for the good man hath not a dark eye for he showeth mercy to all men even though they be sinners now if a benjamite feels what you're doing is wrong they'll have trouble being merciful as paul condemned those folks to death because he thought they were sinners yet we see how all Benjamites should react to the shortcomings of others is in mercy. Let's continue understanding how a bad-minded person operates. Testament of Asher, chapter 2, verse 3. And there is a man that loveth him that worketh evil, because he would prefer even to die in evil for his sake. And concerning this, it is clear that it hath two aspects, but the whole is an evil work. Though indeed he have love, Yet is he wicked who concealeth what is evil for the sake of the good name, but the end of the action tendeth unto evil. The Benjamites and judges died in evil for their brethren's evil works, and would not tell on the wicked men who sinned for the sake of not being snitches amongst each other, to maintain honor amongst themselves. Also Jonathan, the son of Saul, loved his father, though he knew he was evil, and rather to risk dying following him than to separate himself with David in exile. Jonathan is an example of how Benjamites can be double-minded in self-preservation to get their desire 
in that he loved both David and his father and wanted to be acceptable in both of their eyes, so as to ensure he would get the glory before men as second in command. Jonathan didn't love the genuine good, nor did he choose a side for himself, but rather saving face with both sides to ensure he would be in good case if either one prevailed, looking out for his own interests. Testament of Asher, chapter 2, verse 5. Another stealeth, doeth unjustly, plundereth, defraudeth, and withal pitieth the poor. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. He who defraudeth his neighbor provoketh Allah and sweareth falsely against the Most High, and yet pitieth the poor. The Lord, who commandeth the law, he setteth at naught and provoketh, and yet he refresheth the poor. He defileth the soul and maketh gay the body. So Benjamites tend to steal from people, but will have a heart toward the poor man, as Robin Hood. Yet the whole is evil because he is impartial, loving one man for his position and hating another for the same, while at the same time getting the glory of the poor, being respect of men. Continuing reading on the bad mind. He killeth many and pitieth a few. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. So you'll find, for example, they have love for their own crew and loved ones, but will kill and steal and deal unjustly with others. Continuing reading. Another committeth adultery and fornication, and abstaineth from meats. And when he fasteth, he doeth evil. And by the power of his wealth he overwhelmeth many. And, notwithstanding his excessive wickedness, he doeth the commandments. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. So, you find Benjamites would be in fornication and adultery, yet still considering themselves to be religious people, doing some of the commandments that they deem important to maintain their concept of righteousness. Even as Saul, who kept feast days all the while he was trying to kill David, still thinking the Lord was with him. Being blinded by the spiritual stronghold, a Benjamite would be in evil, but think the Lord is working for them, as Saul thought, Ahia had delivered David into his hand and was blessing folks in the name of Ahia when they helped him in his plot as if his cause was upright, not realizing the snare was actually being set for him. So Benjamites can fall into being led astray by an evil spirit thinking it's Allahayim, but they need to take their time and assess if what they are endeavoring is genuinely good to know what spirit is leading them because they can be rash in their speech and actions without thinking things through by the spirit of irascibility, as Saul did during his time as king. Asher goes on to explain this person that does good and evil, saying, Such men are hares, clean like those that divide the hoof, but in very deed are unclean, for Allah in the tables of the commandments hath thus declared. So we see that two faced mode of operation makes the Benjamites unclean, and especially because they aren't men that chew the cud. Barnabas chapter 10 verse 11. Again Moses saith, You shall eat everything that divided the hoof and chew the cud. What meaneth he? He that receiveth the food knoweth him that giveth him the food, and being refreshed appeareth to rejoice in him. Well said he, having regard to the commandment. What then meaneth he? Cleave unto those that fear the Lord, with those who meditate in their heart on the distinction of the word which they have received, with those who tell of the ordinances of the Lord and keep them, with those who know that meditation is a work of gladness, and who chew the cud of the word of the Lord. For why that which divided the hoof? Because the righteous man both walketh in this world, and at the same time looketh for the holy world to come. You see how wise a lawgiver of Moses was? So from the precepts, Benjamites should be and cleave unto them that fear the Lord, meditate on the meaning of what they've heard, 
the teachers who tell the ordinances and keep them not being hypocrites. And know that meditation of the word is an endeavor unto gladness, being guided out of the word for their growth in correcting their ways rather than following their lusts, looking forward to the holy world to come instead of the carnal pleasures of this life. Continuing in Testament of Asher to understand the bad-minded person who does good and evil. Chapter 3, verse 1. But do not ye, my children, wear two faces like unto them, of goodness and of wickedness. But cleave unto goodness only, for Allah hath his habitation therein, and men desire it. When cleaving to goodness only, that's when you know the spirit that's leading you is Allah Hayyam. Continuing reading, but from wickedness flee away, destroy the evil inclination by your good works, for they that are double spaced serve not Allah Hayyam, but their own lusts, so that they may please Belia and men like to themselves. Benjamin struggle with two facedness, being good in some respects and wicked at the same time to please two faced folks like themselves. Jonathan sadly Though he had a good mind towards David, he didn't serve Allah in his two-facedness because he was looking out for himself and still pleasing his evil father being double-faced in hopes of receiving honor of men. The evil inclination can cause you to overlook a person's obvious evil doing because you love them, but being cleaved to them can be to your detriment as it was to Jonathan's. Good men don't have respect unto the two-faced person. Testament of Asher chapter 4 verse 1. For good men, even they that are of a single face, though they be thought by them that are double-faced to sin, are just before Allah Hayyam. Now hopefully that should help you overcome the respect of persons issue by accepting that when you do what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam, two-faced folks will think you're a sinner. Continuing reading. For many in killing the wicked do two works, of good and evil, but the whole is good, because he hath uprooted and destroyed that which is evil. One man hateth the merciful and unjust man, and the man who committeth adultery and fasteth. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole work is good, because he followeth Ahia's example in that he accepteth not the seeming good as the genuine good. Jonathan would have been righteous if he didn't have respect unto his father's wickedness and separate himself from partaking in it and being genuine with David. Continuing reading. Another desireth not to see a good day with them that riot, lest he defile his body and pollute his soul. This too, is double faced, but the whole is good. Benjamites like riotous promiscuous festivals, wherein they get defiled by fornication known today as carnival, bacchanal, or going to clubs. When they turn onto the good mind, they won't desire to have a good day in these environments anymore. Continuing reading For such men are like the stags and to hinds because in the manner of wild animals they seem to be unclean, but they are altogether clean, because they walk in zeal for the Lord and abstain from what Allah also hateth and forbiddeth by his commandments, warding off the evil from the good. Chapter 6 of Testament of Asher Verse 1 Take heed, therefore, ye also, my children, to the commandments of the Lord, following the truth with singleness of face. For they that are double-faced are guilty of a twofold sin. For they both do the evil thing, and they have pleasure in them that do it, following the example of the spirits of deceit, and striving against mankind. Do ye therefore, my children, keep the law of the Lord, and give not heed unto evil as unto good. But look unto the thing that is really good, and keep it in all the commandments of the Lord. Having your conversation therein and resting therein. For the latter end of men do show their righteousness or unrighteousness when they meet the angels of the Lord and of Satan. 
For when the soul departs troubled, it is tormented by the evil spirit, which also it served in lust and evil works. But if he is peaceful with joy, he meeteth the angel of peace, and he leadeth him into eternal life. Now that's important to understand. The very spirits that have strongholds on you to serve in evil lust and work will afflict you when you die. But if you turn to the good mind in truth, hearkening to the angel of righteousness, you'll be led to eternal life. Now let's touch on understanding the spirits that speak to us in our minds because there are two inclinations and we have to be mindful of this to have a good mind. Let's look at the Shepherd of Hermas. I'm going to read Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 6, Chapter 2, Verse 1. Here now, saith he concerning faith, there are two angels with a man, one of righteousness and one of wickedness. How then, sir, say I, shall I know their workings, seeing that both angels dwell with me? Here, saith he, and understand their workings. The angel of righteousness is delicate and bashful and gentle and tranquil. When then this one enters into thy heart, forthwith he speaketh with thee of righteousness, of purity, of holiness, of contentment, of every righteous deed, and of every glorious virtue. When all these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of righteousness is with thee. These then are the works of the angel of righteousness. Trust him, therefore, and his works. Now see the works of the angel of wickedness also. First of all, he is quick-tempered and bitter and senseless, and his works are evil, overthrowing the servants of Allah Hayyam. Whenever then he entereth into thy heart, know him by his works. How I shall discern him, sir, I reply, I know not. Listen, saith he, when a fit of angry temper or bitterness comes upon thee, know that he is in thee. Then the desire of much business and the costliness of many viands and drinking bouts and of many drunken fits and of various luxuries which are unseemly and the desire of women and avarice and haughtiness and boastfulness and whatsoever things are akin and like to these, when then these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of wickedness is with thee. Do you therefore, recognizing his works, stand aloof from him and trust him in nothing? For his works are evil and inexpedient for the servants of Allah Hayyam. Here then thou hast the working of both the angels, understand them, and trust the angel of righteousness, but from the angel of wickedness stand aloof, for his teaching is evil in every matter. For though one be a man of faith, and the desire of this angel enter into his heart, that man or that woman must commit some sin. And if again a man or a woman be exceedingly wicked, and the works of the angel of righteousness come into that man's heart, he must of necessity do something good. Thou seest then, saith he, that it is good to follow the angel of righteousness and to bid farewell to the angel of wickedness. This commandment declared what concerneth faith, that thou mayest trust the works of the angel of righteousness, and doing them mayest live unto Allah Hayyam. But believe that the works of the angel of wickedness are difficult, so by not doing them, thou shalt live unto Allah Hayyam. Hopefully this helps with giving heed to the right voice in the mind. Now Benjamin understood his children would struggle with these spiritual strongholds and gave commandments to overcome Belier and his spirits. A testament of Benjamin, chapter 3, verse 3. Fear ye Ahaya, and love your neighbor. And even though the spirit of Belier claim you to afflict you with every evil, yet shall they not have dominion over you, even as they had not over Joseph my brother. So by being as Joseph, you can overcome the spirits of Belier that are afflicting you. How many men wished to slay him? And Allah Hayyam shielded him. For he that feareth Allah Hayyam and loveth his neighbor cannot be smitten by the spirit of Belier. Being shielded by the fear of Allah Hayyam. That's the big cure. 
fear Allah and love your neighbor. That's the whole law and the fruits of the Spirit. Romans chapter 13 verse 8 to 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So, fulfilling the law will deliver you. Music also is essential for Benjamites healing from the spiritual duress as well. They get into the spirit of the music they listen to as Saul did when the prophets came playing music in 1 Samuel 10 verse 5 and 6. And when troubled by an evil spirit, music can ease the mind from the evil inclination as it did for Saul in 1 Samuel 16 verse 14 to 23. Soothing instruments are essential like the harp, piano, guitar, or sounds of nature to be sure the music is on good frequencies as well. Above all this is the fear of Allah which shields you and genuine love which bring you his help. Testament of Benjamin chapter 3 verse 5 For he that feareth Allah and loveth his neighbor cannot be smitten by the spirit of Belier. Being shielded by the fear of Allah nor can he be ruled over by the device of men or beasts. For he is helped by Ahaya through the love which he hath toward his neighbor. The vices that men plot against you will not prosper, nor would evil spirits or beasts get an advantage over you, as was the case for Paul, who was delivered from men's plots and beasts at Ephesus according to 1 Corinthians 15.32. Benjamin goes on to explain to you the love Joseph had for you to follow after as well. For Joseph also besought our father that he would pray for his brethren, that Ahiah would not impute to them as sin whatever evil they had done unto him. And thus Jacob cried out, My good child, thou hast prevailed over the bowels of thy father Jacob. And he embraced me and kissed me for two hours, saying, In thee shall be fulfilled the prophecy of heaven concerning the Lamb of Allah and Savior of the world and that a blameless one should be delivered up for the lawless men, and a sinless one shall die for unholy men, in the blood of the covenant, for the salvation of the Gentiles and of Israel, and shall destroy Belier and his servants. Chapter 4 of Testament of Benjamin See ye therefore, my children, the end of the good man? Be followers of his compassion, and therefore with a good mind, that ye also may wear crowns of glory. That admonition is straightforward. How he explains how you ought to be good men to overcome your struggles with a bad mind and evil inclination. Continuing reading. Testament of Benjamin chapter 4 verse 2. For the good man hath not a dark eye, for he showeth mercy to all men, even though they be sinners. That's what you ought to do as good men. Yet, Benjamites struggle with partiality in whom they show mercy. If they find the person to be a wrongdoer, in their eyes, they'll lack mercy towards them as Paul once did persecuting the church. Let's continue understanding the good man. And though they devise with evil intent concerning him, by doing good he overcometh evil, being shielded by Allah. So doing good, though people have bad intent towards you, is a crucial cure for you instead of taking matters into your own hands. The bad mind leads them to retaliate with ill will when they feel you're trying to do them wrong. Continuing, And he loveth the righteous more than his own soul. If anyone is glorified, he envieth him not. Paul is an example of a good man, loving the righteous, praising their valiance and striving for the faith, and not envying the glory they receive as believers in Yache. Sadly, Benjamin struggled with hatred for righteous men, as Saul and his daughter Michael did to David, and they envy those that are glorified above themselves, as Saul did unto David, when the people praised him for his acts of war, and Michael did when David was had in honor before the people in Second Samuel chapter 6. 
continuing learning of the good man. If anyone is enriched, he is not jealous. If anyone is valiant, he praiseth him. The virtuous man, he lauded. Sadly, they struggle with jealousy when another is enriched as well. Please visit the lesson on Levi overcoming envy, verification on the cures for envy and jealousy. Continuing. On the poor man, he hath mercy. On the weak, he hath compassion. Mercy and compassion is essential for you all. Continuing. Unto Allah Hayyam, he singeth praises. Music is big for Benjamites, being spiritual and vibesy people. The music helps them incline to whatever spirit the music is in. When they are two-faced, they'll be into wicked and good music depending on their mood by the bad mind. Hence you find reggae music, which has a maze of Benjamin influence, to be a mixture of good talks of love and unity, while promoting fornication and violence by the same artists, and sometimes in the same songs. On the other hand, they sing unto Allah Hayyam, as Paul did in Psalms and spiritual songs, when in the good mind. Continue and read it. Unto Allah Hayyam he singeth praises. As for him who hath the fear of Allah Hayyam, he protecteth him with a shield. Him that loveth Allah Hayyam, he helpeth. You see, the good man protects and helps them that fear and love Allah Hayyam. This helps Benjamites overcome their affinity to bad people like themselves and the evil inclination. For example, if they were in their right mind, men like Jonathan and Abner would have helped David instead of Saul. Continuing. Him that rejecteth the Most High, he admonisheth and turneth back. Mordecai admonished Esther when she was afraid to act on saving her people. He was an example of a good Benjamite, and she was willing to listen as a faithful woman in the Lord. Paul also admonished Peter in the book of Galatians when he had made that mistake. Continuing reading. And him that hath the grace of a good spirit, he loveth as his own soul. These are all good examples. As Paul, who loved the congregation, and Mordecai, who loved Esther as a daughter. Benjamites in their bad mind and two-facedness still can have a lot of love for folks like Jonathan did for David. It's just they need singleness to love the good and cleave to good only. Chapter 5 of Testament of Benjamin If therefore ye also have a good mind, then will both wicked men be at peace with you, and the profligate will reverence you and turn unto good. If someone can give me the definition of profligate, please, <laughs> to help me out here. <laughs> Thank you, Ada. Recklessly extravagant or wasteful in the use of resources. All right. Thank you. It goes on to say, and the covetous will not only cease from their inordinate desire, but even give the objects of their covetousness to them that are afflicted. So you see, the good mind makes you an example of a believer. And how you operate will convert those who come in contact with you, as Paul did, by the good mind. If ye do well, even the unclean spirits will flee from you, and the beasts will dread you. It will also deliver you from the spiritual strongholds. That's the second time your father touched on this fact for your hearing. Continuing. Where there is reverence for good works and light in the mind, even darkness fleeth away from him. So let your respect be unto good works, and keep the light of the law and fruits in your mind to deliver from the dark eye and darkness altogether. Continuing. For where there is reverence for the good works and light in the mind, even darkness fleeth away from him. For if anyone does violence to a holy man, he repenteth. For the holy man is merciful to his reviler and holdeth his peace. So when in the good mind, Benjamites won't be moved to respond to reviler with a railing or response in frustration for being done wrong like they would today, either openly or in their mind. Rather, they'll be silent in mercy, knowing that the reviler is not in the right spirit, hoping they will come out of it, and waiting for due season to speak with good intent in a heart that endeavors peace. Continue reading. And if anyone betrayeth a righteous man, the righteous man prayeth. Though for a little, 
he be humbled? Yet, not long after, he appears far more glorious, as was Joseph, my brother. That will help you in the good-minded response when feeling betrayed by another. Remember, Nalahayim controls all things and can restore what was lost and give more unto a good servant. Continuing. Chapter 6. The inclination of the good man is not in the power of deceit of the spirit of Belier, for the angel of peace guideth his soul. That good inclination Asher spake of and the good mind Benjamin teaches you will lead you to listen to the angel of righteousness only, not being inclined unto the power of deceit from Belier and the evil inclination. Chapter 6, verse 2. And he gazeth not passionately upon corruptible things, nor gathereth together riches through a desire of pleasure. He delighteth not in pleasure. He grieveth not his neighbor. He sateth not himself with luxuries. So Benjamites are covetous for corruptible things, and luxuries when in the bad mind. They'll live a life in pleasure. Continuing. He erreth not in the uplifting of his eyes. For Ahaya is his portion. So the good man isn't an idolater. He only worships Ahaya, Lahayim, and Lord Yache. This is important because Benjamites are susceptible to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits to lead them astray from the true worship of Yache Christ. Hence, a lot of them are in world religions or have their own religion of what's right in their mind, walking in pride. For pride uplifts the eyes. The good inclination receiveth not glory nor dishonor from men. The good man just seeks glory from Allah by doing what's right in his sight, not concerned with what men think. Benjamin struggle with being respected of persons, wanting the glory of men, and holding Allah in light esteem, as Saul will break the commands for the sake of having the people like him, or not wanting them to think dishonorably of him. Continue reading. And it knoweth not any guile or lie or fighting, or reviling. For Ahaya dwelleth in him, and lighteth up his soul, and he rejoiceth towards all men always. So you have to overcome those spirits, Benjamites, to rejoice in light of soul. Being genuine will help you all. Benjamites struggle with the spirit of fighting and reviling. They would be quick to fight, or get into a war of words if they aren't fist fighters. And speaking in anger, they'll say mean things. In layman's terms, they tell you off, or at least do so in their mind. The hatred of brethren and envy causes Benjamites to struggle with depression and anxiety too, in their mind at least. Some of them smoke cannabis and such to ease their mind. Being single as Issachar helps deliver from envy, covetousness of carnal things and riches, and crossing people to get what you want. The spiritual strongholds and fornication. Let's look at Testament Issachar chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. And now, hearken to me, my children, and walk in singleness of your heart. For I have seen in it all that is well pleasing to the Lord. The single minded man coveteth not gold, he overreacheth not his neighbor, he longeth not after manifold dainties, he delighteth not in varied apparel. He doth not desire to live a long life, but only waiteth for the will of Allah Hayim. And the spirits of deceit have no power against him, for he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. There is no envy in his thoughts. So hopefully that helps for edification. And you can also visit the whole lesson on Issachar for further edification. Now continuing in Benjamin's admonition on the good mind that you all need. Testament of Benjamin, chapter 5, verse 5. The good mind hath not two tongues of blessing and of cursing, of contumely and of honor, of sorrow and of joy, of quietness and of confusion, of hypocrisy and of truth, of poverty and of death. But it hath one disposition, uncorrupt and pure concerning all men. That two-tongue and two-facedness is what Benjamites need to overcome. 
There are a lot of Benjamites in the island since you find island music is two faced religious talk and worldly talk for love and hate. Continuing reading. He hath not a double sight or double hearing, for in everything which he doeth or speaketh or seeth, he knoweth that Ahaya looketh on his soul. When Benjamin's eyes are open from respecting persons, unto the knowledge that the Lord's looking at his soul, then he will do what's right for conscience sake, no matter what others think, even as Paul did when the Lord opened his eyes to the light. The Lord is who changes their hearts, as Saul's was initially changed in 1 Samuel 10 and 9. So all we can do is pray for them while setting an example of a believer in hopes they come out of the bad mind. Benjamin taught even how to interact with each other, knowing your struggles could be overcome if you respond as Joseph would. Let's look at that in Testament of Benjamin, chapter 5, verse 4. For if anyone does evil to a holy man, he repenteth, for the holy man is merciful to his reviler, and holdeth his peace. And if any one betrayeth a righteous man, the righteous man prayeth, though for a little he be humbled, yet not long after he appeareth far more glorious, as was Joseph my brother. Testament of Joseph chapter 18 verse 2 And if any one seeketh to do evil unto you, do well unto him, and pray for him, and ye shall be redeemed of the Lord from all evil. Testament of Benjamin chapter 4 verse 3 And though they devise with evil intent concerning him, by doing good he overcometh evil, being shielded by Allah Hayyam. So that's a proper example of how one ought to respond. Let's continue learning of the good mind. Testament of Benjamin, chapter 6, verse 6. He hath not double sight nor double hearing, for in everything which he doeth, or speaketh, or seeth, he knoweth that Ahaya looketh on his soul. And he cleanseth his mind that he may not be condemned by men as well as by Allah. And in like manner, the works of Belier are twofold, and there is no singleness in them. That's why we cover the two facedness Asher spake of, because your father wants you to be single to overcome Belier's works, understanding it's not okay to be in good and bad together. Chapter 7 of Testament of Benjamin Therefore, my children, I tell you, flee the malice of Belier. Malice is important for you all to overcome. The definition of malice is ill will, the intentions or desire to do evil. Remember Joseph's example to overcome malice and Issachar, who didn't get offended or frustrated when another did malicious things. Uh, Testament of Simeon, chapter 4, verse 4. Now Joseph was a good man and had the spirit of Allah within him. Being compassionate and pitiful, he bore no malice against me, but he loved me as the rest of his brethren. In Testament of Issachar, chapter 4, verse 5, No malicious person maketh his soul to pine away, nor worry with insatiable desire his mind. Your father explains what the rewards are of malice, envy, and hatred of brethren, that you may know the severity and abstain from it. Therefore, my children, I tell you, flee the malice of Belier, for he giveth a sword to them that obey him. Verse 2 of chapter 7. And the sword is the mother of seven evils. First, the mind conceiveth through Belier, and first, there is bloodshed. Secondly, ruin. Thirdly, tribulation. Fourthly, exile. Fifthly, dearth. Sixthly, panic. Seventhly, destruction. Therefore was Cain also delivered over to the seven vengeances by Allah Hayyam. For in every hundred years, Ahaya brought one plague upon him. And when he was two hundred years old, he began to suffer. And in the eight hundred and twenty-ninth year, he was destroyed. For on account of Abel, his brother, with all the evils was he judged, but Lamech with seventy times seven. Because forever those who are like Cain in envy and hatred of brethren shall be punished with the same judgment. Knowing these things, Benjamites need to flee malice, 
evil doing, envy, and hatred of brethren, do goodness and love. It's yes, interesting, Rachel's children. Remember, Joseph also admonishes his children about hatred of brethren. So among Rachel's children, there's a struggle with hatred within the family. So you'll have to be mindful of that. Chapter 8. Do ye, my children, flee evil doing, envy, and hatred of brethren, and cleave to goodness and love? He that hath a pure mind in love looketh not after a woman with a view to fornication. For he hath no defilement in his heart, because the spirit of Elohim resteth upon him. For as the sun is not defiled by shining on dung and mire, but rather drieth up both and driveth away the evil smell, so also the pure mind, though encompassed by defilements of earth, rather cleanseth them and is not itself defiled. This is another way your father wants you to follow Joseph because you all struggle with looking at women or men with thoughts of fornication and fornication itself. Hence, your music is very promiscuous. Fornication is a spiritual stronghold wherein Belier can rule your mind. But Joseph set the example. Testament of Reuben, chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. For ye heard regarding Joseph, how he guarded himself from a woman, and purged his thoughts from all fornication, and found favor in the sight of Allah and men. For the Egyptian woman did many things unto him, and summoned magicians, and offered him love potions, but the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Allah of your fathers delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For if fornication overcomes not your mind, Neither can Belier overcome you. So that's edification of how to be as Joseph when it comes to fornication. Continuing in Benjamin to understand what his children would be struggling with in these last days. Testament of Benjamin, chapter 9. And I believe that there will be also evil doings among you. From the words of Enoch the righteous, that ye shall commit fornication with the fornication of Sodom, and shall perish, all save a few. The evil doings he was referring to was the issue of fornication and the fornication of Sodom. Fornication leads Benjamites to do some wicked deeds, as we saw in Judges, where they were gay, seeking to rape the Levite, and jumped him, and raped his wife. They can be found doing acts of Sodom and adultery and fornication, and taking advantage of young girls as the Sodomites slept with men's daughters and wives, and no one said a word. They also are inclined unto festivals of wine and fornication, like Carnival and Bacchanal, as the people of Sodom held festivals every year to get drunk, party, and sleep with each other's women in Jasher chapter 18, verse 11 to 15. Continuing in Benjamin chapter 9 and shall renew wanton deeds with women so even after the wicked acts and judges Benjamites can still be found in wanton deeds with women the definition of wanton is of a cruel or violent action deliberate and unprovoked there is still sexual abuse happening among the Benjamites also wanton means sexually unrestrained or having many casual sexual relationships so this helps understand that fornication is among the relationships among the benjamites as you find in island music it's all about sleeping with women but not only in the island since benjamin was scattered to the four corners of the world so their musical content is in america the uk and other countries as well Men continue in chapter 9. And the kingdom of Ahia shall not be among you, for straightway he shall take it away. The kingdom was taken from Saul the Benjamite and given unto the house of Judah. He goes on in verse 2 to say, Nevertheless, the temple of Elohim shall be in your portion, and the last temple shall be more glorious than the first. The land of Jerusalem belongs to Benjamin. That's the blessing of dwelling between Ahia's shoulders that was spoken of by Moses. Continuing reading. And the twelve tribes shall be gathered together there, 
and all the Gentiles until the Most High shall send forth his salvation in the visitation of an only begotten prophet, and he shall enter into the first temple. And there shall the Adonah be treated with outrage, and he shall be uplifted upon a tree. And the veil of the temple shall be rent, and the spirit of Allah shall pass on to the Gentiles as fire poured forth. And he shall ascend from Hades, and shall pass from earth into heaven. And I know how lowly he shall be upon earth, and how glorious in heaven. He knew of Yahshua to come, having explained the things that he would do. Continue and read it. Uh, chapter 10 of Testament of Benjamin. Now, when Joseph was in Egypt, I longed to see his figure and the form of his countenance. And through the prayers of Jacob, my father, I saw him while awake in the daytime, even his entire figure exactly as he was. Benjamin was single-minded and hearted toward his brother Joseph and longed to see him for the love he had for him with no ill mind but love only. Continue reading. And when he had said these things, he said unto them, Know ye therefore, my children, that I am dying. Do ye therefore truth and righteousness, each to his neighbor, and judgment unto confirmation, and keep the law of Ahaya and his commandments. These are your cures, so strive in it until confirmed in the sight of Allah as good men. Continue it. For these things do I leave you instead of inheritance. Do ye also therefore give them to your children for an everlasting possession. For so did both Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. For all these things they gave us for an inheritance, saying, Keep the commandments of Allah until Ahayah shall reveal his salvation to all Gentiles. This is your inheritance unto the end of the world, and there is a reward for it. And continuing, and then shall you see Enoch, Noah, and Shem, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob rising on the right hand in gladness. Then shall we also rise, each one over our tribe, worshipping the King of heaven, who appeared upon earth in the form of a man, in humility. And as many as believe on him, on the earth, shall rejoice with him. Then also all men shall rise, some unto glory, and some unto shame. And the Adonah shall judge Israel first for their unrighteousness. For when he appeared as Allah in the flesh to deliver them, they believed him not. And then shall he judge all the Gentiles, as many as believed him not when he appeared upon earth. And he shall convict Israel through the chosen ones of the Gentiles, even as he reproved Esau through the Midianites, who deceived their brethren, so that they fell into fornication and idolatry. And they were alienated from Allah becoming therefore children in the portion of them that fear Ahaya. Gentiles that will be converted will convict Israel by coming into the faith, becoming children that fear Allah being examples of believers. Continuing verse 11 of chapter 10. If ye therefore, my children, walk in holiness according to the commandments of Ahaya. Ye shall again dwell securely with me, and all Israel shall be gathered unto Ahiah. His words are for your benefit to be with him in the world to come. Continue in reading. Testament of Benjamin, chapter 11, in verse 1. And I shall no longer be called a ravening wolf on account of your ravages. This explains Jacob's prophecy in Genesis 49. Saul gave the Benjamites the reputation for ravening in devouring the poor during his time as king to give to his own in first samuel chapter 8 verse 10 to 18 continuing reading but a worker of ahaya distributing food to them that work what is good paul on the other hand divided the good spoils among the faithful who worked good so that benjamin would no longer be called a raven and wolf Undoing the bad reputation Saul gave to the tribe. Continue reading. And there shall rise up from my seed in the latter times one beloved of Ahaya, hearing upon the earth his voice. Paul did hear Allah's voice from on the earth, 
In Acts chapter 26, verse 13 to 18, Benjamin goes on to say, And a doer of the good pleasure of his will, enlightening with new knowledge all the Gentiles, even the light of knowledge, bursting in upon Israel for salvation and tearing away from them like a wolf and giving to the synagogues of the Gentiles. Paul is the ravening wolf taking the spoils of the gospel from unbelieving Israelites, distributing it to the Gentiles. Continuing reading. As until the consummation of the age shall he be in the synagogue of the Gentiles and among their rulers as a strain of music in the mouth of all. And he shall be inscribed in the holy books, both his works and his words. And he shall be a chosen one of Allah forever. His preaching will be among the Gentiles for their growth until the end through the scriptures. Continuing reading. And through them. He shall go to and fro, as Jacob my father, saying, He shall fill up that which lacketh of thy tribe. Benjamin knew Paul's letters would spread across the world through the holy books. Continue and read it. And in the last chapter of this book, And when he finished his words, he said, I command you, my children, carry up my bones out of Egypt and bury me at Hebron, near my father's. So Benjamin died 125 years old at a good old age, and they placed him in a coffin. And in the 91st year from the entrance of the children of Israel into Egypt, they and their brethren brought up the bones of their fathers secretly after the Canaanitish war. And they buried them in Hebron by the feet of their fathers. And they dwelt in the land of Canaan after departing from the land of Egypt. So that is the lesson on the tribe of benjamin hope this was edifying there was a lot of information hopefully it's helpful for the benjamites and for all of us shabbat shalom brothers and sisters i'll be with you all see you soon